Hello and welcome to Neil Invest. Thanks for joining me here today. We're going to have a look over a clean energy ETF that looks really interesting. So the result of this video is actually because of one of the subscribers, Liam Messi. here he is below, put a request into my previous video I did on the Global Clean Energy iShares ETF and asked me to have a look into this one because there's a couple of things that caught his eye and I agree, they were pretty interesting. So when I've looked into it a little bit more detail, actually, it is uh, you know, there's a few things around this that are worth considering sure. that would be important to you guys to know about before investing in it. So if this sounds like your thought of thing, please consider subscribing and let's get to it. So LNG's Clean Energy ETF, R-E-N-G, is, is really new fund and it's only been brought to the market in November 2020, so November last year. And it is tiny in terms of fund size. So when you consider that there's only about $70 million under asset management within the fund, it is tiny in terms. If you compare that to the iShares, Clean Energy um, ETF, that's 5.4 billion assets under management. So we've got only $70 million invested within this fund. So it is a small fund. And when we look at the li literature here in terms of the detail around the fund, we can see that the LNG Clean Energy ETF aims to track the performance of the Selective Clean Energy Index, NTR. So basically the Selective Clean Energy Index is a German index that tracks the biggest sustainability focused companies across the world. So this ETF tracks against that German index basically. So $70 million under asset as we can see here created 11th of November 2020. So the first thing that caught my eye is this. So before we get into that, if you're new to the channel, um, I do work in sustainability as part of my day job. So I do sit on a number of independent bodies throughout the UK that focus on sustainability of in FMCG, um, fast moving consumer goods. So that is my day job. So by no means am I an expert, um, but I have, do have a view on it. So it gives me a view in terms of being able to interrogate this sort of ETF relatively well. So the first thing that's caught my eye is when you look down here in the literature, it says that a company is only eligible for conclusion, inclusion in the index if it is sufficient size determined by reference to the total market value. So basically if it's big enough, but basically the sustainability criteria is what gets me here. So it says in the literature that in order to be able to be included in the ETF, first, they must not derive substantial revenues from coal mining. So I'm worried about the definition there of substantial. So what is substantial? It's not clear. So they must not be involved in substantial revenues from coal mining. So that could still mean, well, you know, that's anyone's definition of what substantial means. I mean, is 100 million substantial? Is 10 million substantial? I don't know. But basically, if you're involved, the business that's involved and creates money and creates revenue from coal mining, by your very definition, you are not a sustainable business. The mining of coal and burning of fossil fuels is one of the worst things you can do in terms of harnessing energy in this day and age. So not clear there. The second thing is must not be involved in the manufacturing of controversial weapons. Now, first off, why the hell would a clean energy be in business be interested in arms? Perhaps, perhaps it's a nuclear aspect, but I, I don't quite get it myself. However, again, I'm concerned with the ambiguity of this definition of controversial weapons. I mean, what makes a weapon controversial? What you got there? Uh, a grenade. Fine, carry on. What you got there? Machete, double-edged, get out. I mean, what is the difference? What makes, one, what makes one controversial and one not? Not clear to me again. And finally, the most valuable of the lot probably, it must not have breached the UN global compact principles for a continuous period of three years. So these principles are a set of guidelines to help define if a corporation is actually approaching sustainability in a genuine way or not. And that is great, but look at the criteria. And so here they are, the 10 principles of UN global compact. They're not hard to meet. So when you look at the 10 principles, they're broken down into a, ser a series of buckets, human rights, labor, environment, anti-corruption. So in order to be able to follow these principles, basically you need to adhere to human rights. You need to make sure you're not incorporating modern slavery into your business. Some really loose ones on environment that we'll look at in a sec, and you need to not be corrupt. So the environment ones are business should support a pre precautionary approach to environmental challenges undertake initiatives to promote greater environmental responsibility 
and encourage the development and diffusion of environmental friendly technology. So basically be interested in environment, consider the environment and make sure you're incorporating them into your approach going forward. So the benchmark is not exactly high in the first instance. However, again, it says here in the literature in terms of being incorporated in the ETF that for a continuous period of three years have been classified as being in breach of at least one of the UN Global Compact Principles. So for a continuous period of three years, so basically you can dump gallon after gallon of oil into the ocean for two years, 11 months, and you're fine. Do it for three years, now watch yourself. So this is a bit ridiculous in terms of the definition there, in terms of being included within this ETF. It is so loose in terms of the definition. So I'm really worried about that in the first instance. So Barry, barrier for entry into this ETF is really low uh, and the reality of that means that you can come unstuck with a bit of greenwashing. So greenwashing is basically within my industry it is where you purport something to be a lot better th for the environment than it actually is. I'll give you an example. So you know those f those naked bars you get or those fruit bars or those protein bars what they often do is they'll put a paper laminate onto the outside of that to make it look like the whole thing's paper when in reality what they've done is they've created a complex laminate which is paper plastic paper plastic usually paper plastic and barrier and that then means that it is a complex laminate which means it's worse from the environment if you'd originally kept it in just the plastic outer on the outside but it gives the perception to the consumer that it is the right thing to do because it has a paper wrapper on the outside that then is greenwashing because you're making something appear to be more sustainable than it actually is and in reality what you're actually doing is making it worse so because RENG is so new, it's hard to know how it was actually performed. Um, so the best thing to do is actually to have a look at the selective index that we mentioned. So that's what RENG tracks against. So if you have a look at it here, over the last 12 months, it's returned really well. Um, May last year, April last year, we were at 125 and now we're at about 250. So you're looking at a 100% increase over the last one year. If you look at it from a five year perspective, you can see that really, the most amount of growth has been over the last 12 months and a significant dip there for the um, for the pandemic. Prior five years before that though, very little growth. And the reason for that is, it, it stands to reason because the real focus within sustainability has been within the last year. And the reality is actually, most people think it's been within the last three years, but it has really picked up within the last year. And that means that businesses that associate themselves with sustainable credentials that are on sustainability ETFs just like this one are more likely to be growing and they're more likely to be getting more business and they're more likely to be getting more traction and they're more likely to be getting more PR. So that is enabling them to grow. How sustainable that is, that's the question for the long run. So for RENG, all we can do is look at the chart for the last six months. And as we can see here on Hargreaves Lansdowne, when it started trading November last year, it was in at around 831 there or thereabouts, and it's now trading at 988. So some decent returns, even in this period, which tracks really pretty closely against the global, um, the iShares Global Clean Energy ETF as well, which peaked in January too, and has been on a bit of a decline since. So since January, that was the peak. However, there is big news out this week with Joe Biden announcing that by 2030, the US is looking to halve its carbon emissions. Great news. Um, it also means that it will be pushing the sustainability agenda on forward. The UK has set out their own targets and they're looking to reduce 68% in terms of greenhouse gas emissions by the end of the decade as well. So two major leading powerhouses in the Western world are really starting to go after this sort of stuff. And it is gonna make businesses actually really track against carbon emissions. My business personally has recently this quarter announced that it's going to renewable electricity and in order to uh, acquire renewable electricity you've got to get it from the sort of guys that are on these ETFs which is going to obviously help growth. So when we look at the top 10 holdings then most of these businesses are made up of companies that um, supply wind energy, they supply parts to the wind energy industry or they supply solar parts or they are solar energy suppliers or you've got Eon as well at the bottom that have a significant amount of um, sustainable credentials in terms of their energy sourcing. So a good split at the top in terms of the top 10 constituents, what you don't get to see is the remaining, so this is 57 constituents within this, so you don't get to see the other 47, and we already saw barrier for entry before it was pretty low, so they could be, I don't know what they could be, they could be anything. Typically within ETFs, you never get to find out, unfortunately, because that is their proprietary information, that's what makes the ETF what it is, so they don't share what the other holdings are. 
However, it's nice to see that it is relatively diversified to the number of holdings in there and it is not top heavy. So the Global iShares Clean Energy ETF is pretty top heavy in terms of holding. This is really, really nicely spread. And equally nicely diversified in terms of sector. So we've got 52% within industrials, 25% utilities, 12% IT, etc., etc. So nicely split. And my favorite part of this is the, um, now I'm assuming that currency relates to ge ge geography in terms of where these businesses are based, and I'm hoping it does, because the split here is pretty nice, and it's, uh, it's Europe in the lead with 29.2%. So again, iShares is US in the lead significantly. When in reality, I know within this sector, Europe is leading the way in terms of innovation and tech development, in terms of clean energy development, um, not just within energy sourcing, not just within recovery of renewable energy, but also a number of different initiatives, startups, businesses that are doing all sorts of things, um, supported by academia, supported by industry. There's a lot of activity in Europe, above and beyond anywhere else across the world. So Europe at number one, US at number two, and then it continues down to a number of different countries. And a lot of these are actually doing some pretty good stuff in terms of sustainability as well. So diversification from constituents, from sector, from currency, from geography, I really like. Now then, cost-wise, so to start with, R-E-N-G, you cannot get in very many places. You can get it on the free trade uh, plus accounts. That's $9.99 a month. You can't get it in trading two and two. You can get it in Hargreaves, Lansdowne, but when we look at the costs down here, you're looking at 0 0.4 plus 0 0.49. So this is not a cheap ETF to be getting into. You're gonna be losing nearly 1% of any growth that you get in this instantly if you do it through Hargreaves, Lansdowne. So this is not a cheap ETF to get into unless you are looking at doing it through free trade and you have a free trade account. So looking, if this is an investment that you're considering and you're considering for the long term, there is potential that you could get some good returns against this, basically because of specifically the regulation and the requirements that are coming in from a government and a US level in terms of making sure that the energy that you supply within your business is renewable, is green, etc. There could be some pretty good growth here. So the growth potential of this ETF, I think is pretty considerable. I think there could be some considerable growth opportunity here. Now, what I'm worried about is the greenwashing piece that I talked about earlier. I'm not sure it does exactly what it says in the tin. I think there is an element here of trying to convince investors that this is genuinely a, a green ETF to have, and it might be, don't know. I mean, if we could look at all of the 57 holdings, we might be able to give a view of, of what this ETF is like in depth, but, they, but, but we're not gonna get that. So it, it's taking a bit of a gamble. In terms of potential to grow, I think it was, it's pretty good, right? So my ice is with trading two and two this year, so I won't be investing in this. I'm not gonna be paying the 11.95 fee through Hargreaves Lansdowne. I'm not gonna be paying 9.99 through free trade. However, it's an interesting one. If you do hold either of those accounts, it's potentially worth investing in. It potentially could give some significant returns over the coming years. I hold the iShares Global Clean Energy in my trading two and two portfolio. I'll put a little, little picture there. Not a significant amount. It is as part of one of my pies. Uh, I'll be adding moderate bits to it over the coming years. Um, as I see that there could be some potential opportunity there within this, um, within this sector. Hope it was useful to you guys. If you did find it useful, please consider subscribing. Thanks a lot. Take care.